The Great Ocean Road covers some of the most spectacular scenery in the world. It winds past the magical Twelve Apostles, iconic surfing beaches, stunning stretches of coastline, lush rainforests, misty waterfalls and seaside villages. The Great Ocean Road stretches for some 240 kilometres along the southeastern coast of Australia. It was built by returned soldiers between 1919 and 1932 and dedicated to soldiers killed during World War I. The road is the world's largest war memorial. Few other roads in the world can boast 240 kilometres of such awesome beauty as can the Great Ocean Road. The coastline is magnificent. But the dramatic seascapes and spectacular scenery hide a dark secret. Because not only is this stretch of coastline among the most beautiful in the world, it is also by far the most rugged, hostile and treacherous coastline in the world. Cape Otway Light Station is the oldest lighthouse on the Australian mainland. It has operated continuously since 1848. Before Bass Strait was discovered by Matthew Flinders around 1799, ships had to sail around Tasmania, taking an extra week to 10 days. But sailing the waters between King and Flinders Islands and the mainland is still treacherous. During the early years of European settlement, over 500 sailing ships were wrecked along this coast. In fact, over 80 ships were lost between Cape Otway and Port Ferry alone. So this section of the coast can well be called the Shipwreck Coast. Virtually all of these shipwrecks occurred in a period of about 30 years between the mid-1800s and the early 1900s. Most of these ships sank at night or in a howling storm. The most famous and tragic of all these shipwrecks was the Lockhart, which sank just off the fatal shores of the shipwreck coast here at Lockhart Gorge. There's an amazing story to be told here don't miss it. Gold was discovered in Ballarat in August 1851. It was found here in a place ironically called Poverty Point. Within days, news of the find had spread to Melbourne and Geelong. Within weeks, eager prospectors were making their way here from all corners of Australia. Within six months, news had spread around the world and people rushed here from England, Europe and America. Nobody wanted to miss a windfall. 1852 was the year when there was nothing but gold. Finding this gold was easy. Panning simply involved washing dirt in a gold pan. And as it tilted and swirled, loose dirt and gravel washed out, leaving the heavier gold behind. Larger quantities of dirt were rocked in a cradle to wash away clay and gravel, trapping the golden layer of blanket. Over 600 tonnes of gold came from Ballarat's gold fields. Ballarat also became home to the second largest gold nugget ever found, the massive 69 kilogram welcome nugget. When this piece of gold was discovered, no scales that were capable of weighing a nugget of this size were available, so it was broken into three pieces on an anvil. The nugget weighed about 72 kilos. At today's gold price, it would be worth about $2.5 million. 
Inspired by the lure of gold and the promise of a new life in a new land, thousands of fortune hunters from around the world flooded into Victoria, transforming the gold fields into some of the most cosmopolitan places on earth. The gold fields were a topsy-turvy place where men could become rich overnight. Wealth was being extracted from the earth in great quantities. Ballarat was one of the richest gold fields the world has known. The gold fields became a melting pot of humanity. Tradesmen and artisans set up shops and established businesses to meet the needs and demands of the miners. They were blacksmiths, candle makers, metal workers, grocers and printers, and they came from all over the world. If you walked on the world famous Ballarat gold fields or into the tented camps in 1854, you would hear many different accents of a multifaceted society. Italian, Irish, Dutch, Russian, English, German, Swiss, French, American, Canadian and Chinese. They were fortune seekers, entertainers and adventurers. As the alluvial gold on the surface ran out, gold seekers were forced to look further underground. Deep mining was more difficult and dangerous. Places such as Bendigo and Ballarat saw great concentrations of miners who were forming partnerships and syndicates to enable them to sink ever deeper shafts. The population expanded as more people arrived and settled and established homes and businesses. The streets and camps built on gold grew into a prosperous, bustling township, soon to become a fine provincial city. There was only one way that all of these thousands of people from overseas could get to Victoria, the gold fields and beyond. And that was by ship. The first year after gold was discovered in Ballarat, the number of ships arriving in Port Phillip Bay more than doubled. 100 ships a day were sailing past Cape Otway Lighthouse. After sailing over 20,000 kilometres from Europe to Australia, the final obstacle for ship captains was the western entrance to Bass Strait. This narrow stretch of water between Cape Otway and King Island is just 90 kilometres wide. Known as the Eye of the Needle, it is considered the most dangerous stretch of water in the world and became an infamous graveyard for many sailing ships. The last sailing ship to lose passengers at the entrance was perhaps the most famous and the most tragic. The Lockhart left Gravesend, the Port of London, for Melbourne on the 2nd of March, 1878, under the command of Captain George Gibb, a newly married 29-year-old. The Lockhart belonged to the best-known fleet of sailing ships on the Australian run at the time. The Lockline Company was founded in Glasgow in 1867. There were 23 Lockline ships. Of these, 16 met a tragic end. On its fourth trip to Australia, the Lockhart carried a general cargo, which reflected the affluence of Melbourne at the time, built on the wealth from the gold fields. On board were perfumes, grand pianos, crystal chandeliers, clocks and marble goods, as well as a heavier load of industrial items, such as railway irons, cement, lead and copper. Aboard, the Lockhart carried 54 people, a crew of 36 and 18 passengers, most travelling first class. Nearly half of the passengers belonged to one family, the Carmichaels. Dr Carmichael, his wife, four daughters and two sons were migrating and planning to start a new life in Australia. To celebrate his love for his wife, Dr Carmichael had recently given her an expensive gift, a James McCabe watch that had originally been intended as a gift for King George IV on his visit to Dublin in 1821. This precious watch was taken aboard the Lockhart 
and travelled with the Carmichaels on their journey to Australia. After 90 days of sailing that had taken the Lockhart across the Atlantic, through the tropical doldrums and far south into the iceberg-laden waters of the Southern Ocean, the passengers expected to arrive in Melbourne the next day. That evening, they celebrated their pleasant journey and held an end of voyage party. But there was one last challenge to overcome. They must thread the eye of the needle as they approached the dreaded shipwreck coast. There was thick fog and visibility was poor. Captain Gibb was anxious as he couldn't see the Cape Otway lighthouse and so was uncertain as to how close he was running to the coast. It was thought they were about 240 kilometres southwest of Cape Otway. A fatal miscalculation. Concerned for the ship's safety, he stayed on deck throughout the night with Tom Pierce, an apprentice sailor. At 4 a.m. the fog lifted and the lookout cried that he could see breakers. Then the dreaded pale cliffs of the shipwreck coast came into view and Captain Gibb realised that the ship was much closer to them than expected. The Lockhart had missed the eye of the needle. Realising the danger, Captain Gibb immediately set full sail to turn the Lockhart away from the cliffs and out to sea. But wind and current carried the ship toward the cliffs. Sails were lowered and anchors dropped in an attempt to hold the ship's position. But the anchors didn't hold and dragged across the ocean floor. By this time, Lockhart was among the breakers and the tall cliffs of Muttonbird Island rose behind the ship. In a final desperate attempt, the anchors were cut and sails again raised. The ship began to make headway, nearly clearing the cliffs, but the bow struck a shallow reef running out from Muttonbird Island and stuck fast. It was doomed on the fatal shores of the shipwreck coast. Waves broke over the ship and the top deck was loosened from the hull. Water flooded the cabins. The passengers screamed in terror as the ship began to disintegrate. The masts and rigging came crashing down, knocking passengers and crew overboard. There was pandemonium as the crew struggled to launch the lifeboats. When one was finally launched, it crashed into the side of the Lockhart and capsized. Tom Pierce, the young ship's apprentice to launch the lifeboat, managed to cling to its overturned hull and sheltered beneath it for hours. He drifted out to sea and then when the tide turned at dawn, he was swept into what is now known as Lockhart Gorge. He left the boat and swam to shore. Bruised and dazed, he found a cave in which to shelter. He was all alone. Some of the crew and passengers stayed below deck to shelter from the falling rigging, but drowned when the ship slipped off the reef and sank into deeper water. Eva Carmichael, the second daughter of Dr. and Mrs. Carmichael, had raced onto deck to find out what was happening, only to be confronted by towering cliffs looming above the stricken ship. In all the chaos, Captain Gibb grabbed Eva and said, if you are saved, Eva, let my dear wife know that I stood by my ship to the last and went down with her and died like a true sailor. That was the last Eva saw of Captain Gibb. She was swept off the ship by a huge wave. Eva couldn't swim and clung fiercely to a piece of broken mast. For five hours she held on, desperately fighting for life. Finally, she was swept towards the gorge by the incoming tide. At the long, narrow entrance to the gorge, Eva's mast jammed against some rocks. She was exhausted and only semi-conscious. In the distance, she saw Tom Pierce on the beach and called out for help. Tom heard her weak cries. He was badly bruised and cut by wreckage, but he didn't hesitate. He dived into the dangerous waters 
and swam out to rescue Eva. He struggled for an hour to reach Eva and with great difficulty dragged her safely ashore. Tom carried Eva to the cave and made a bed of grass and shrubs for the unconscious woman and did all he could to make her comfortable. Tom then returned to the shore to look for survivors, but there was no sign of life on that fatal shore. He found only piles of wreckage. Tom realized that he must reach civilization and find help if they were to survive. And so a few hours later, with great difficulty, he climbed the steep cliffs of the gorge and set out in search of help. He followed hoof prints and came upon two stockmen from nearby Glenample Homestead, about five kilometers away. In a state of exhaustion, he told the men of the tragedy. They rode back to the homestead for help, but Tom insisted on returning to Eva. After her miraculous rescue, with great difficulty, Eva was hauled up the cliff and carried to the safety of Glenample Homestead. There, with much care and attention, the two shipwreck survivors gradually recovered and were nursed back to health. Tom and Eva were the only two survivors of the 54 people on board the Lockhart. All the other passengers and crew perished. Eva lost her parents, three sisters and two brothers. Despite heroic efforts, only five bodies were ever recovered from the wreck of the Lockhart. And four of them are buried here in this clifftop cemetery above Lockhart Gorge. The fifth was buried on the beach where it was discovered. The bodies of Mrs. Carmichael and Eva's older sister, Raby, were among those recovered. The precious watch given to her by her husband was found on Mrs. Carmichael's body, along with a locket. Today, we can only guess at the actions of Mrs. Carmichael in the chaos and darkness of the shipwreck. Perhaps the two items that she clung to, the watch and the locket, reminded her of those she held most dear, her husband and her family. Eva was devastated by the loss of her entire family on that fatal shore. She was now alone in a foreign land and longed for her extended family back in Ireland. However, she was devoted to Tom and forever grateful to him for rescuing her. On several occasions, she embarrassed him by embracing him in public and exclaiming, my savior. Tom Pierce became a national hero and was awarded the gold medal of the Humane Society in front of 5,000 people on June the 20th, 1878 at the Melbourne Town Hall. The romantic sentiment of the time was that Eva and Tom should marry, but this was not to be. Within three months, Eva had returned to Ireland and they never saw each other again. What a remarkable rescue. A young man, bruised and battered, risks his life and returns to the dangerous ocean to save a young woman in distress and near death. We love rescue stories and we love heroes. They stir our emotions. Some of the most dramatic, amazing and exciting rescue stories ever are found in the Bible. The stories of Daniel, Noah, Jonah, Joseph, Rahab and others have been shared, told and loved for generations. They never lose their appeal and are as popular as ever today. Rescue is one of the most important themes in the Bible. In fact, the Bible is one big story of God's rescue plan, and it takes the whole Bible to tell this story. Listen to Psalm 91 verse 14. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him, I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. And here's another example in Psalm 144 and verse seven. Reach down your hand from on high, deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters. And Psalm 69 verse 14 says, rescue me from the mire 
Do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me from the deep waters. Here's another rescued text in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 18. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Yes, rescue is one of the most important themes in the Bible and lies beneath all of the stories in the Bible. But the most amazing and incredible story is when Jesus Christ rescued you and me. We are part of the greatest rescue story and He is our rescuer. In a sense, we're all in a shipwreck situation. Ever since Satan deceived our first parents, Adam and Eve, and enticed them to sin and rebel against God, we've been doomed drowning. Sin entered the world. Rejection of God brought separation and enslavement to evil and death. Because the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, the wages of sin is death. So we're doomed, dying, drowning because of our sin. God could have abandoned us to our fate, but He didn't. God is love and His love for us is too great. He was determined to rescue us, whatever the cost. God's love for us was so great that He just had to rescue us. And so Jesus Christ came on a rescue mission from heaven to earth to rescue each one of us. He alone was able to rescue the human race. As the most famous verse in the Bible says, John chapter 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Yes, 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to earth on a rescue mission, on the shores of Galilee, in the streets of Jerusalem, in the homes and at the marketplaces. He searched and rescued. That's why Jesus came to this earth, as we read in Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, to seek and save that which was lost. When He pulled Peter from the stormy waters of the Sea of Galilee, when He healed the blind man at Jericho, He was lovingly rescuing people as part of God's great rescue plan. And there were many others, a leper, a prostitute, a hated tax man, religious people, rich people and poor people. Today, Jesus is still seeking and rescuing the lost and calling men and women, boys and girls everywhere, and offering to take them to a place of peace and safety. If you feel you are drowning under the burdens of life, if you are being tossed about in a stormy sea of despair and heartache, if you are being blown around by the winds of strife and pain, then remember, Jesus offers security, happiness and fulfillment. And what a great difference that makes to a person's life. If you would like to experience that difference in your life, if you'd like to be part of the greatest rescue story and have Jesus rescue you, why not ask Him right now as we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank You for Your love and goodness to us. The Bible is one big story of Your rescue plan and it takes the whole Bible to tell this story, the story of our rescue. And in this story, Jesus is always at the center because He is our rescuer. Father, we're often buffeted by the winds and storms of life. Thank You for loving us so much and for sending Jesus to rescue us. We want to be part of Your rescue plan and have You save us and take us to a place of safety and security in Jesus. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We all love rescue stories and we all love heroes. They stir our emotions. Some of the most dramatic, amazing and exciting rescue stories ever are found in the Bible. 
the stories of Daniel, Noah, Jonah, Joseph, Rahab and others have been shared, told and loved for generations. They never lose their appeal and are as popular today as ever. But the most amazing and incredible story is when Jesus Christ rescued you and me. We are part of the greatest rescue story and He is our rescuer. Jesus offers security, happiness and fulfillment. And what a great difference that makes to our lives. If you'd like to experience that difference in your life, I'd like to recommend the free gift we have for all our viewers today. It's a booklet called, Does God Really Make a Difference? This booklet, Does God Really Make a Difference? is our gift to you and is absolutely free. There is no cost or obligation whatsoever. So please don't miss this wonderful opportunity to receive the free gift we have for you today. Here's the information you need. Phone us now on 048 1315 101 or text us on 0491 999 or visit our website theincrediblejourney.tv to request today's free offer. So don't delay. Phone us now on 048 1315 101 or text us on 0491 999 or visit our website theincrediblejourney.tv to request today's free offer. Contact us right now. If you've enjoyed today's journey, be sure to join us again next week when we will share another of life's journeys together and experience another new and thought-provoking perspective on the peace, insight, understanding and hope that only the Bible can give us. The incredible journey truly is television that changes lives. Until next week, remember the ultimate destination of life's journey. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. <laughs>